pressure and depth. You may have noticed when swimming that as you go further under the water, you feel a greater pressure. We can use Newton's second law to find an expression that relates depth and pressure in a static fluid. A static fluid is one that is at rest or at equilibrium. Remember that equilibrium means zero acceleration and the sum of the forces acting on a body in equilibrium is zero. We will look at a given column of fluid in a container and consider the forces acting on it. Our column has a top and bottom surface area of A and a height of H. Drawing our free body diagram, we first have the force of gravity acting on the column of fluid. The force of gravity acting on the column is equal to the mass of the fluid in the column multiplied by the gravitational acceleration, g. On the top surface of the column of fluid, a force acts downward on the column due to the pressure from the fluid above the column. We will call this force F sub P1. Remember that pressure equals the magnitude of the perpendicular force divided by the area over which the force is acting. We will call the fluid pressure on the top of the column P sub 1, which means that the magnitude of our force from above is P sub 1 times A. Similarly, on the bottom surface of the column of fluid, a force acts upward on the column due to the pressure from the fluid below the column. We will call this force F sub P2. If the fluid pressure on the bottom of the column is P sub 2, the magnitude of our force from below is P sub 2 times A. If we consider the vertical direction to be the y-axis, we can see that all three of our forces act along the y direction. Since the column of fluid is in equilibrium then, we will say that the sum of our forces in the y direction is zero. If we choose up to be positive, then that means that F sub P2 minus F sub P1 minus F sub G equals zero. We can now substitute in our expressions for our forces to get this equation. We learned previously that density equals mass divided by volume. That means the mass of the fluid in our column equals the density of the fluid multiplied by the volume of the column. The volume of our column equals the surface area A multiplied by the height. We plug in our expression for mass into our equation and see that we can cancel the surface area A from each term. We were looking for an expression that tells us how pressure changes with depth, so we will solve this equation for P sub 2, our pressure at the greater depth. This expression tells us that if we know the pressure P sub 1 at a higher depth, we can find P sub 2, the larger pressure at greater depth, if we know the density of the fluid and the difference in the depths. For this expression, we are assuming a constant density rho at the different depths. This works well for fluids, but gases change density more easily with depth, so we will only use this expression for gases if the height h is small enough that the gas density will not change appreciably.